So I'm just going to go ahead now and open up my terminal and I'm going to cd into temp. I'm going to run npx create react app. I'm going to name this project my app. If you're not sure which terminal I'm using, I'm using iterm. Uh, they're all very similar. You can use whichever one you're familiar with. So just now that's downloaded, you can cd into my application and open this up in VS Code. Visual Studio's code is my text editor of choice. Now we'll just run our project with npm start. And this is going to give us the boilerplate for create React app. However, we don't need a lot of these files, so we can just ditch a few of them. We can get rid of that logo. We can get rid of the CSS. And we can get rid of this app.css as well. We can also get rid of this functional component here, because we're not going to be using functional components. We're going to be using class-based components. And we can pop out that line. So now, uh, before we move on, we need to make a few imports or a few downloads. So we'll see the into temp into my application and we'll run npm install dash dash save, remembering to include the dash dash save so that we keep our files in our package.json and we'll download AG Grid Community and AG Grid React. AG Grid Community is the free version of AG Grid and AG Grid React allows us to render our grid as a React component. So now I'll just fill out some boilerplate class app extends react.component and we'll just fill this in now. So there's the constructor. Pass props to super. And we'll set our state to initially be an empty object. We'll also include the render function, which will return some GSX. And we'll print to the screen, hello world. And as you can see now, we have a very basic setup. So let's go back and make a few imports. So we're going to start off by importing the AG Good React component from AG Good React library. Next, we're going to import the structural CSS needed in every grid. So we'll go through AG Grid Community, dist, into styles, and get our file aggrid.css. The next import is going to be the theme that we're using. So for this project, we're going to be using our most popular theme, AG Theme Balum. And you'll see us put this into our CSS in a moment. Here I am defining the column definitions for each, uh, for each grid. So for this grid, every grid needs some columns and rows. So here's the first column. We define a header name which will appear on the grid and a field which will correlate with our row data. So I'm just going to skip through this next part. Each car has a make, a model and a price. Next is the row data. The first row has a make of Toyota, a model of Celica and a price of 35,000. Not sure whether that's pounds or dollars. So just skipping through this next part. OK, and here I am uh, defining the container for the grid. So this, uh, this actually holds the class name of our theme. So we'll pop it in here, AG theme balum. And we'll also include some styles, just defining the width and the height of the grid. So we'll give a width of 500 pixels and a height of 600 pixels. Inside here, we're going to nest our AG Grid React component that we imported from AG Grid React library. Making sure to bind our column definitions and our row data in our state to our component. So there's the column definitions, and here is the row data. And if we take a look at that now, we have a grid, which is a little bit too narrow, so let's just quickly change the width to be 600 pixels. And perfect, here is a fully functioning grid. The most popular features used in any grid are really sorting and filtering. So we'll add that to our grid now by adding two flags, sortable true and filter true to each column definition. So let's just get rid of that error. And now if we take a look at our grid, you can sort by just simply clicking on the header names. Um, you can hold shift and click multiple headers to sort by more than one column. And as, as you can see here, Toyota and Porsche are switching places because they have the same price. 
So next we're going to comment out our row data since you're more likely to fetch it from a, an API or a server instead of hard coding it. So we'll initially set it to null. And in following the React way, we'll use component did mount and we'll fetch our row data using the fetch API. So this is going to return a promise, which will run, uh, will get give us a response. We can run response.json to get JavaScript object back with our row data, which we're then going to set the state to be equal to. We'll also include a catch in case we get any errors. And we'll simply log the, any errors to the console. And as you can see, we have many rows now. Let's add some more things to this grid. So namely, we'll add row selection, which can take a string, either single or multiple. We'll enable multiple row selection. And now we can select rows. So by clicking them, we can hold command to select multiple rows, or we can hold down shift to select a range of rows. We can also include a flag in the column definitions, checkbox selection, set that to true, which will enable us to have checkboxes which select our rows in the same manner that we did previously. Okay, let's just get rid of that line. Next, we're going to use the grid's API to find out which rows have been selected. So here we are writing out a button. The event is going to be on button click, and we're going to get our selected rows. So we'll just find that here on button click. Actually, let's move that down. So we'll get const selected nodes. And here we need the API, which we don't have access to at the moment. The easiest way to get it, access to the grid's API is on the on grid ready event. So we'll just write an inline function here, on grid ready, which will give us a params uh, parameter. And we'll set this.grid API equal to params.api. So this.grid API dot get selected nodes will return to us the selected nodes in the grid and we'll map over that to get our selected data. And since we're gonna render this to the screen, we'll have a constant selected data string presentation. So we'll map over our selected data, return node.make with a space and node.model. And we're gonna join this whole array with a comma and a space. And we'll alert this to the screen. So let's go ahead, get a range of rows, and here we have it, all of our selected nodes. So now we're gonna open up the terminal, and we're gonna run npm install dash dash save ag grid enterprise. This is going to unlock the enterprise features in the grid. We invite you to try them out for yourself, uh, and come back to us for a license if you want to use them in your project. So we'll quickly make that import. And now we can see the grid has been transformed. We have access to this context menu now, a uh, custom context menu, which you can customize, you can change. Here is some export functionality. You can read our documentation on it. It is quite detailed. And here's the column menu, and we can see our filters have also changed. This is the set filter in the grid. It has a mini filter for searching. Uh, you can customize this too fully. So let's just go ahead and now do some grouping. We'll set row group to true on our first column, and we can get rid of these checkboxes. And now if we take a look at our grid, we have now grouped our rows, and we've generated a new group column, which we can actually configure. So if we write auto group column def, we can configure the group column. So we can change its header name to, let's say, model. We can render a field within this column, so we can render the model of each car, for example. And this group uses a cell renderer uh, it's actually the default to use. You don't need to include this line, but just so that you know, we've included it here, the AG group cell renderer, which can also be customized by passing params too. So cell renderer params, and we can include checkboxes, for example. We also have to make sure to bind this from our state into our component. So here we have it, checkboxes and we've rendered the model of each car into this new column. 
the group column. So we can actually, you know, comment out this uh, this line here, cell renderer, because it is the default, and the grid works exactly the same way. Now, if you would like for the header for the group node to select its children, then you just have to include a flag in your grid. So let's go ahead and add that. Just simply write group selects children true. And now selecting a group node will select its children and deselecting it will deselect its children. And the group doesn't have to be expanded for this.